Hey, in this video I'm going to show you how we can work with multi-dimensional arrays using NumPy. Here's how. To create a NumPy array, we could say something like array equals access the library of NumPy dot call the array function, and then we can pass in one of a few values. A zero-dimensional array, think of it like a single point. I could pass in some value, like a character. This is a zero-dimensional array. And to check that, there's actually an attribute. Let's print access our array, access the attribute of NDIM, meaning number of dimensions. The number of dimensions of our array is zero. It's a zero-dimensional array. If we had a few values within a list, let's add a few characters here. I'll just pick the first few characters of the English alphabet, A, B, C. This is now a one-dimensional array, like a single row. Now the number of dimensions that we have is one. Let's convert this to be a two-dimensional array. I'll enclose our list within another list. And I'll add a few more lists. We'll add a few more letters. D, E, F, and then I'll just do some copying and pasting because I'm lazy. G, H, I. If you were to arrange your lists like this, they would form a sort of two-dimensional matrix. This is a 2D array. Sometimes people refer to it as a matrix. There's rows and columns. If I was to print the number of dimensions, that would be two. It's a two-dimensional array. Now we're going to go to an even higher dimension, three dimensions. We'll enclose our 2D list within another list. And just for readability, I'll put each two-dimensional list on a separate line. Now we'll create a 3D array. We'll take our 2D array, copy it, do pay attention to the number of brackets, we're not copying the outer set of brackets. Comma separate each 2D list. And then I'll replace some of the letters. I'll fast forward the video. Feel free to pause it if you need more time. Now, this is very important. I ran out of letters in the English alphabet. Each of these lists they need a consistent number of elements with each other. It has two elements. All the others have three. If I was to run this program, here's what happens. Value error, setting an array element with a sequence. The requested array has an inhomogeneous shape after two dimensions. We need a consistent number of elements within each list. This list has two, all the others have three. What you could do is add some sort of placeholder I'll just use a space, but an underscore is another good option. Now this should run fine. Now the number of dimensions for our array is three. It's a three dimensional array. You could go beyond three dimensions too. You can go to four dimensions, five dimensions, but that's going to be outside of the scope of the series. We'll stop at three dimensions to try and keep it simple. We have a three dimensional array. You can also access the shape using this attribute, the shape attribute. This will return a tuple of integers. It shows you the depth, the number of rows, and the number of columns. We have three layers. Think of it like it's a cake, a layered cake. That's the topmost layer, the middle layer, and the bottom layer. Each layer has three rows. One, two, three. Each row has three columns. One, two, three. If I was to remove one of these layers, the shape of our array is going to change. I'll delete the last layer. The shape of the array, it's still three-dimensional, but it has two layers, three rows, three columns. If you ever need the shape of an array, you can access the shape attribute. Let's undo the last changes we made. Previously with the Python list, you would access an element like this. I'm going to print axis R array. Then you would use chain indexing. For example, I need the first layer that would have an index of zero, the first row, also zero, then the first element, the first column, also zero. That would print the character A. 
This is known as chain indexing. But with NumPy, we have access to something called multidimensional indexing. Here's what it looks like. You'll only be using a single set of straight brackets. Then comma separate each index. 0, comma, 0, comma, 0. That would print A. For the next element, that would be B. 0, 0, 1. 2 would be C. If I was to access 3, well, we would have an index error. Index 3 is out of bounds. For the next row, you would need row 1. Row 1, column 0. That gives you D. Row 1, column 1 is E. So let's see what 1, 1, 1 is. That is N. That's layer 0. Because with programming, we tend to start with 0. This is layer 1, row 1, column 1. So that gives you N. That is multidimensional indexing, and it's actually faster than chain indexing. Here's an exercise. We're going to form a three-letter word using string concatenation. We'll say word equals, now pick three letters. For me, I'll pick A, S, then S again. We'll access these letters via multidimensional indexing. For an A, I need layer 0, array, layer 0, row 0, column 0. And then let's print our word. Print word. That gives me A. Then I will add, using string concatenation, array at indices of, let's see, Layer 0, layer 1, layer 2, layer 2, row 0, column 0. That would output AS. And then I'll add that again. Array, layer 2, row 0, column 0. And my three-letter word that I picked is ass. So for your homework, why don't you use string concatenation and post a three-letter word in the comment section? I might regret saying that. And that is an introduction to multidimensional arrays using NumPy.